cover messed up big time. What am I talking about? Cover was found in violation of the subcontract act, so they broke the law. Receives an advisory from the Japanese FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. Their their own Fair Trade Commission. Fair Trade Commission, I think it's in their case, Fair Trade Commission. But they broke the law. They're found to break the law. They're found to be uh, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And that is unexpected on my end. But I have to cover this because I always like holding everybody responsible for the things that they mess up, especially large corporations. Cover has received an advisory from the Japanese FTC over its violation of Subcontract Act ban on redos. According to the statement by the FTC, the Fair Trade Commission, uh, between April 2022 and December 23, Cover unjustly demanded 23 subcontracts change character designs and have movements. Subcontracts are delivered according to original orders, but cover demanded redos such as making their move more smoothly and rebalancing body proportions. A total of 243 times. That is insane. That is insane. That's like over 10 times per talent that they were doing during this time. Cover did not pay any additional fees regarding redos. That is unfair. As far as I know, every single time I've seen I've wanted to have it commissioned, redos after like the second or third one, like, you know, you, you can have certain things redone certain things edited certain things edited certain things like that but beyond like two to three redos you're already going to get charged of the 23 subcontractors 19 are freelancers also subcontracting fees were not paid until the redos were over and that according to japanese law is illegal and the ftc found this in violation of the antitrust law ban on late payments and issued a guidance so they were given a warning they weren't sued or anything but they were given a warning because you're breaking all these laws upon receiving the advisory cover had paid 1.5 1.15 million yen which is just about maybe a little bit less than a hundred thousand dollars no a little less than ten thousand dollars actually a little less than ten thousand dollars based on uh the current rate like eight to nine thousand dollars in interest accrued in the late payments to all subcontractors affected once the unpaid fees regarding the redos have been calculated cover says it will pay them as soon as possible cover has made a statement on the case of course um this case was over the creation of both live 2d models and 3d models cover says that it failed to properly explain its demands in the original design orders thus causing the need for multiple redos cover says that its fast expansion has caused large increase in orders is what they're saying here in their in their full thing here which led to poorly worded orders and delays in payments cover promises to review its employment strategy and transaction workflows train its executives and employees as well as creating a monitoring system to prevent this from happening again it also promises to announce it anything new that must be addressed comes up this is good this is a good step i have a feeling that cover will actually do this and it will not just you know lie and just be like oh just doing this for pr you know what i mean so i have a feeling that they will do this edit number two jftc's official statement is found here this is their official statement on the matter. It's a long statement, but let's see uh, the shortened version. Case one, cover ordered from a single subcontract in April 8, 2022 for live 2D model. Subcontractor delivered in April 20, 2022, but cover demanded 10, eight, 10 days later, cover demanded re seven redos that were not based on the original design order without any compensation of the seven redos. Three were requested past the seven-day inspection period after delivery written in the contract. So they broke contract as well. Out of these three redos, two were done on request by the VTuber after cover had notified the subcontract that the contract is complete. So of the three redos, two of them were because the uh, wh whichever library it was, wasn't happy with the way it was and asked that they could have a redo and cover acquiesced to that, basically allowed it. After all this was done, cover forgetting to properly do the accounting paid for the order on December 27, 2023, 619 days after the original delivery. That is bad. That a lot of artists live paycheck by paycheck, live uh, commission by commission, a commission getting paid 619 days after the original delivery is unforgivable from a just even an independent person. You would get put on blast for this. You would get put on blast for this if you were an independent that had this issue, even if you didn't have the money, etc. let alone a corporation. Bureaucracy destroys everything. Here we go. Case two is similar to case one with unpaid redos starting with original order on October 22nd, 2022, but cover notified that all checks by company and talent are complete. 277 days after the original delivery, despite the inspection period being five days after delivery. Payment was also not done for another 35 days, so about 300 days until payment was fully done. Case 3 follows a similar story with unpaid redos, starting with the original order on January 24, 2023, but cover notified that the live 2D model was delivered 230 days after its original delivery. So something got lost in there. It's just way too much time, despite the fact that cover had started using the live 2D model around two months after the original delivery on stream. So they used it 60 days after. So they knew everything was good, but they didn't go through and pay it until 230 days after. Uh, 266 days, because 36 days after the 230 days that it was marked. And this is Ko Mashiro, Aomaru Poka's illustrator, shares his views. Uh, Komashiro says, this is a common occurrence in Life2D industry. No one knows the rules. Most illustrators don't know how to draw for Life2D model. 
Some riggers want layers done a certain way and such, and many clients don't realize that. Coordinating this should be the client's responsibility, so it should be cover's responsibility. What happens when it's not done? It's all thrown at the illustrator. Do people offer to pay for redos not based on the original order from the beginning? Definitely not. That's how things are. VTubers often ask for changes after coloring has been done. This happens more often than there are more people in between. There are many other companies that are worse. The important part is the redos were not part of the original design order. So yes, cover's bad, but there are worse players out there. Of course, that doesn't excuse what cover did, but there are worse players out there. Independents, small agencies, other agencies, you know, they, they are worse people out there that haven't been caught yet. Large corpos that has numbers are not necessarily always good, uh, but they tend to be better with this kind of stuff. Some people actually think they should be done for free, not joking, uh, not to take the blame off of them, but it feels like this case has been used as a warning. It has because it's a large corporation. A lot of agencies do that. This commission did it on purpose because they wanted people smaller to be like hey we're watching you we we're we're look this big company this big company wasn't wasn't beyond us it wasn't beyond us warning them so we're watching that's why to all creators you're entitled to ask compensation for work and that's in or that's in not in the order people have asked about this kind of stuff before it feels like many people had and have problems uh, with doing this the levels of what about ism from sisters are about to skyrocket literally is the first comment i saw when i clicked on it not the worst violations i've seen from a corpo heck i have seen worse from other corpos even nba teams and that's the thing it is not a a lawsuit it is not like oh my god they're gonna close down but it is something that should never have happened obvious gaff from cover and yes it's quite a bad situation which like this explains a lot of life 2d and 3d pipeline issues but uh cover corp owned up to the mistake which is a big thing that lays out what went wrong, even properly identifying what they did wrong. They resolved the situation per JFCC's own statements with the subcontractors in question. And most importantly, they out steps to ensure this never happens again. That's the difference. Even if there's going to be what about ism, even if it's going to be like, oh yeah, you know, any color is bad, but look at, look at a uh, hollow life. Remember they actually went through and we're like, oh crap, this is a big mistake. We're fixing it. We're not only fixing it, but we are putting things in place. And of course I will be there to hold them, their feet to the flame as I do with every agency out there. I, you know, when Idol had an issue with paying people, Idol Yen, Idol Corp had an issue with paying their artists, I went against them too. So I am just being even in calling out different people, even though I love cover and I love the agency's uh, talents, the VTubers under them. I will not give them a pass when things like this happen. Of course, proof is in the pudding. They actually did do what they said. They paid people. They paid the fees, the, the extra fees, the overage fees, the, the, um, the interest fees, and they're making change. And it was just a warning or so after all this doom and gloom, remember it was a warning, but yes, cover messed up big time with this. A bit of an update on something that I had covered in previously in an episode. Uh, Ver, of course, decided to do a hiatus for his uh, personal health, mental health, and also for, again, his school. Since he does he does something in school, I think he's going for a master's or something like that. He is, well, I'm taking him at his word because that's the best way to do it, especially if they have cleared it up here. Before any speculations begin, this hiatus was a long time coming. It was already discussed with my fans as to why, basically, I'm a little overburdened with school and work at the moment. So I need to take a step back and focus on those. I'll be sharing more details on my last stream on the 26th. Thank you always for your support. Of course, a lot of people, including myself, said that this could possibly be one of those same things as kunai. Could be anything. It could be anything. But I also remember I mentioned that taking them at their word. And, you know, that was just my little rat that was in there. My little, uh, you know, speculation. It was speculation. And it was just that. Nothing behind it. Nothing to prove it. Just things that had happened in the past. But Ver themselves said it's not going to be that way. So I'll trust Ver. Not going to lie, feels like the talents are aware of subreddit or current Niji's image. Both the talents on a hiatus have to explicitly address speculations. I mean, there a few days ago, there's a post when we mentioned Millie had Claude's last name in their subreddit. Suddenly, they fix it ASAP. I think it confirms that Niji has eyes on the sub because I think they're, they're the ones that relay the message to the livers about no speculating so that we can't weaponize their situation. Um, they do browse other places, and that's more than normal. Honestly, this doesn't surprise me. He did, in fact, state on one of his recent streams that he was going to be taking a, a break. Just hope he'll be okay. I hope it helps his his, his whatever me his mental state, whatever mental state he's in, whatever emotional state he's in. I do hope it helps him out because no human should have to go through a lot of stuff, a lot of nasty stuff. And his people is how you stop speculations. Short, straight to the point, kills all vague posting yes and someone can trust even a single word in Sanji. anything they say is basically vague posting hiatus what if the livers being fired yeah Nidhi Sanji does it way too vague of course i guess maybe to respect the the, the livers themselves uh funny enough this finished armchairs last vod he was talking about how things can be taken out of context by different parts of the audience seemed like his closet fan base closest fan base would have known it would come but have trusted Nidhi Sanji's official more specific post yes and I, the reason i'm making this post as well 
is because uh, I have gotten from my community. Thank you guys. Thank you guys in the comments that let me know, you know, it's not going to speculate. And also Ver has already talked about this before. So I wanted to put it out. There. Sakuna or, you know, the, the gamer made onion aqua. I'm just going to say the name because, of course, they're no longer a part of the organization that they were a part of before. They've had a nice little break and they want to come back. And why do I mention their old name? Uh, because, like I said, they're gone. They're gone from there. They're no longer there. They're never going to be there. They fully graduated. They're never going back. And I want people who were uh, fans of hers to be able to find where they are now and find what they're doing now. And it says seeing Hollows reincarnate feels really strange. Not behind the scenes. Corporals aren't paradise. Might look like from the front, even hollow life, and there are probably tons of restrictions and rules to follow. We really gotta wonder the level of disagreement is required for someone to quit a 2 million plus YouTube career because she had over 2 million subscribers and start fresh while being unable to cooperate with any of your friends in hollow life. That is left to be seen. Burnout and high expectations is the answer. Even Ame case, her creative uh, streams always seem to do better every single time and somehow became unofficial trend setting in VTuber in general. For Aqua, if she confirmed, follow, I mean, she might be moving back to her old place. She might be moving back to the country to, you know, relax and be more just, you know, whatever. Um, She may just want a slow life. She used to live in the countryside and move to Tokyo to, you know, for the hollow life thing. To be closer to the studio, be closer to the um, to the headquarters, to not have to travel so much to the headquarters, that type of thing. Burnout in entertainment and burnout in Texas is real. I knew someone from SpaceX engineer who this person knew somebody who one day resigned and now lives on a farm with his family. He left a staff career role for a farm life. And that is true. Sometimes you get burned out and it's just having a creation like that. I mean, two plus million subscribers a lot of times has a lot of expectations, a lot of contract work, a lot of uh, sponsorships a lot of singing, a lot of things on your schedule that you have no control over, that you have to a lot of times say yes to because that's in your contract, that type of thing. When you are an independent and you have decided to be independent, you can do that yourself. You can decide what you do, what you don't do, where you go, how long you stream, all that kind of stuff. No minimums, no nothing. You just go and do it based on what you want. And that's what she wanted. And here is her uh, video for her showing of her stuff. Here you go. Yuki Sakuna, she is the one here in this channel. Uh, Sakuna channel, just look for Sakuna CH. And the if it has 267k subscribers, then you're at the right place. And that is the gaming made onion, the the gamer made onion. Aqua, this is her new channel. She hasn't even shown up yet, and she's already got so many viewers. And of course, the last time she posted was two years ago. So this is her PL. She deleted. Looks like she maybe deleted a lot of her stuff in order to you know be in hollow life and be fine but she's back and that's what matters nyaners which is a big twitch vtuber a pretty big from what i understand i mean freaking 497k followers on twitter alone so she's big she recently had a little bit of an issue what is that issue she got banned from twitch for a specific period of time of course people are like no way like that's weird it's strange why did she get banned she is a twitch streamer who doesn't have like doesn't show thighs doesn't show any of that kind of stuff why would she get banned well here's why she got you have to lock in for this one So she's doing that to the she's doing that to the sound of the music, which is funny. It's funny as heck. Of course, that's that's what she would do. But the big issue is she flew too close to the sun. She slapped too close to the sun and got burned. I rise from the asses. I will return soon. So she did that. And of course, as you know, with VTubers, you can't be showing thighs and stuff like that. The weird thing is, remember that Twitch themselves says that VR chat runs on different rules. VR chat is a game, so games run on different. So she wasn't showing her butt she wasn't showing her her thighs she was showing game thighs so games should this should not have happened by twitch's own this should not have happened because it was a game it was a game with thighs vr chat throws shows that or worse and they don't get banned so this was just twitch not even following their own rules which is interesting to say the least not unexpected but interesting and of course she says um people are like you can play the game for free on stream. It's called Butt Slapper by at 
Amarillo Arts, and it slaps. Ha ha ha. The Home Depot song is such a bop too. Such a hilarious stream and 100% not deserving of a ban. Guess you missed too many perfects. Okay, now we've cre recreated this IRL as a collab. You'll see Twitch mods love it, of course. And like I said, this is a game. This is a game, Twitch. Why are you banning her for playing a game? Not to harp too much, but I do like showing the differences between different agencies. And in this case, it is Face Connect beating out the black company, according to this person. Why? As we know, Kurosanji, Nidhi Sanji, is pretty much a merch company with uh, VTubers as their merch. Uh, and here you have Daki Makudas, and you have uh, a standee, an e a cheat keychain, a birthday keychain, a UAP uh, mini plush as well. So you have all these different things being created for Clara in this case. And here's her mini plush. It has felt. Of course, this felt is used in a lot of these mini plushes and a lot of plushies. Looks really, really cute. It was for the birthday celebration on October 22nd, of course. And that is creative merch. Of course, like I said, keychains, acrylics, those things sell really well and they say really fast. Dakimakuras, because of the price involved in it, it doesn't sell as fast, but it's nice to see even a small agency like this trying to be creative, and I'm pretty sure with some input of Clara herself, trying to do some creativity, you know, trying to make sure that the creativity does happen. Never thought I'd hear Bill Badger from Rupert referred to as a sexy man. Clara's something special, what, something, what that something is, I'm not sure. Can we take a minute to talk about how twerkable Clara's theme is? Well, duh about it. Not being a black company, you left out at the coffee. Good old fish man doing the girls boost the amount of attention on this real business. Yes, of course. He is, it's, it's this basically face connect as a coffee company, which VTubers. <laughs> that's the that's the meme going on there. But they are trying things, trying to take less risks, of course. As a smaller agency, they have to take less risks, but they're doing some nice creative stuff too. Hollow Life TV, which is the Japanese version of Hollow Life English, is basically their Japanese branch, is um, mentioning how now you have rainy day. Uh, basically voice packs here. These are the rainy day voice packs that you're here that you'll have here, Aokun. And it looks like Matsuri is there too. Uh, you have them here. Let's go to the English site so you guys can understand what's what it's being said here. You have here, Hollow Life Slice of Life Whispering Voice Pack, Rainy Day's Comforts Complete Set, $81. And who do they have? They have Sora, Roboko, Aki, uh, Matsuri, uh, Yuzuki Choko, Azuki, Noel, Lami, Poka, Koyori, Ao, Ririka, and Raden. So they're all going to be in there. And they're all going to be showing their lovely voices, each and every one of them. And there you have a little bit of a taste of it. Wanted to give you guys a little bit of a taste of it. And that's a little bit of new voice packs. I mean, voice packs can be bought all around the world. So you don't even have to be from the US or any or Japan or anything like that in order to buy it. First, Hollow Live first collaboration live viewing event has been announced. Come watch all three of Hoshimachi Suisei's live tour 2024 Spectra Nova concerts together with other fans. More details to come. And of course, here you have the V-Square actually mentioned there. First live viewing event with V-Square and Hollow Life. What you might see, we say live tour 2024, Spectra of Nova. Commemorative first live tour screening in three parts. Additional information will be released shortly. So that's going to be, of course, V-Square, as I mentioned before, as I've covered before, is a um, playground for virtual fans. It's kind of like a virtual store for a lot of things. And this is going to be a thing that they're going to set up for the Hoshimachi Suisei. So V Square, its site is loading very slowly. I do apologize for that. But yeah, V Square is basically a place where you can, a virtual mall, pretty virtual mall where you can buy various things and shop as well. It's a Korea based one, South Korea, of course. So, of course, I'm there to just let you know that this is another thing that's happening with Hololive. Hololive Productions is having a pop up store that'll be held in the Hakata region of Japan in Hakata, Japan. Looking forward to seeing you at the pop-up store, Hollow Lantern Fest. And of course, along with this, they have it here. They have the Hollow Live Lantern Fest here, the studio.site. It is having all the girls here. It says Hollow Live Production Lantern Festival pop-up event held on the fifth floor of Hakata Marui from November 17th. The Heavenly Maidens who participate in the Taiwan Lantern Festival descended on Fukuoka. The 10 Heavenly Maidens from Hollow Lantern Fest appear dressed as dragons. There's also lantern-shaped and extremely rare angel standees. We will also be selling limited collaboration goods, so be sure to stop by. Official website is there. These are all the girls. I covered it when it happened in Taiwan back in the day. I did cover it, and now they're having it here. This is their big Lantern Fest thing. This is their full site of all of the merch that they have there. You can see here that all the different pieces of merch. Very cute, very beautiful designs. And also the, the nice little chibi designs. And you have a lantern yourself that you can carry. So those are the fun things that are happening there. And along with that, there um, looks like they might be continuing their 
Ah, here's a closer look, a little closer look of the actual way it looks at the store, the way it's going to look inside the store. It's all going to be limited edition stuff, as mentioned, and it's going to have all the girls there, as you can see there. You know, Mume, you have the Fumoko twins, you have Ina, Watame, Suisei, Koyori, it looks like, uh, Muna, you have Reine, and Kobo, it looks like as well. You have them all there. So congratulations to them. And I hope it goes really well and it's very successful because Hollow Life seems to really care about their talent. Another VTuber has been banned. And this is a recurring theme when it comes to Twitch and their bans. They just seem to have like automated bans. They seem to just have random bans because people report. You show hips for a second. You show too much hips for a second. They'll just get banned. And um, here is their actual tweet here because I always like showing the tweets involved in this whole situation. Streamerbans.com's bunnies. Uh, Bunny has been banned. She's a Twitch partner. She's not just an affiliate or anything like that. Of course, you have people asking if, you know, they provide any rationale, if anything like that happened. Um, Twitch doesn't provide very many rationales. Of course, when we know about this, we know it's like no way I expected the subathon to end or take a break on. Hope you can get it reversed. People like this Bingus here is not happy. Other people just aren't happy. It's just, why are you banning just people randomly like this? It seems like VTubers are getting hit more than anything. But let's see what, uh, if there's any updates on this. The update is, uh, considering she just already been banned after 14 hours, uh, it does not cancel the auto renews, apparently, because some people thought the auto renews got canceled. It doesn't. So apparently she's been unbanned. Uh, that means that when you get unbanned that quickly, for me, it means that you, like, they messed up. Like, there's no real, there was no real big rationale of them getting banned. Because if in 14 hours you get unbanned for something that supposedly broke TOS, that doesn't make any sense. It's not even a day ban. It's not even anything like that. It's 14 hours. It just doesn't make sense. How hard is it to immediately roll out a reason for the ban? Even if they came up with a BS reason, it's better than just giving no reason at all. And it would be easier to appeal and stay away from whatever reason they give out. Yeah, it gives you a reason to, like, it gives you something to avoid in the future. Email to the same time as the ban. OP chose the title on purpose. Now, whether the ban reasons are good or not, it's an issue altogether. But as you can remember, there are some people who've never gotten that. There are some people who have uh, just not gotten it. Shondo, Fallen Shadow, did not get a reason until she made a stink on Twitter. So yeah, and that is that is the big issue there. And of course, uh, you know, she is, I believe, a um, VR chat streamer. So there are a lot of lax rules with VR chat, but it all depends on what she did there. I believe she does bikini and that kind of stuff in VR chat. Not going to show it, of course, because it turns the service as well. But um, that's what usually she does. So uh, it is, you know, you can say, oh, well, she deserved it, etc. As long as they give you a reason, then, of course, you fix it. But if they give you no reason and then you're gone and then it's gone after 14 hours, that means it wasn't a good one to begin with. Welcome back, everybody, to your showcase, the place where I like to showcase up and coming VTubers, VTubers of all sizes. Anyone who wants to be shown on my VTuber showcase, there is a link in the description down below. It is a Google uh, Google link, it's a basically Google Forms link where you can fill in uh, yourself or a VTuber that you want to recommend for the VTuber showcase to be showcased on my channel. It's all free, of course, and I do this just to push forward smaller VTubers, to push forward other VTubers, and to also give some love to the community and make it a better place. We're talking about Alfie Kronos, Alfie Kronos 47, who is a rank 47 villain. This is, you know, their PFP, their actual creation here. It's all very nice. And uh, let's take a look at their bot section. A VTuber with a big personality. I'm glad to have you here uh, with your big personality here. Let's see what you have in your videos. Your most recent one was four days ago. And here we go. Let's take a look at some stuff. One enemy remaining. Now, of course, just to let you guys know, when someone plays an FPS like this, especially right now that she's trying to make sure that they don't take away the what she planted, the bomb that was planted, you have to be very, very, very careful. And also, you know, trying to make sure that you always um, are very concentrated. That's why she's not speaking very much. But um, I love the designs. The design's very cute. The uh, mascot there, I believe it is. It looks like a black dog. It's very nice. I, I hope I didn't mistake it for a cat or anything like that. But here you go. Also, here you have their YouTube channel, which is just starting out. And of course, take a look and see if it's something that you enjoy. And I do hope that this does give you a little bit more eyes on your channel. And that's why I do this. And thank you so much, so much, Alferia, for letting me showcase you on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. That is all the news that we have for today. Please let me know down below if you want to know any more news or if you have any comments regarding anything that you saw here, which I will try my best to respond to. I love seeing your comments down below. Of course, as well, like and subscribe. 
to the channel. Uh, that will give you more uh, information every single day. I do two videos a day, so hopefully you enjoy.